So all in all, it was a pretty traumatic, horrifying experience and I don't think I'm going to understand it right now. I, I guess tonight we might find out how I go. They're going to definitely lower the dose. I think I'm going to have about a quarter. And yeah, we'll just see how we go. I just hope Ayahuasca is going to be a lot more gentle with me this time around. We were saying how um, there are so many things that you think about from your, your teenage years that you're just like far out. Oh, if I could go back and like apologize to that person or like mm. not do that or, you know, feeling guilty for the things that we did when we were younger, but now it's just kind of like, well, we're not that same person. Coming from that, we were saying how there's so much that you're learning to release when you're when you're younger you have no idea like you have all this anger resentment like sometimes you don't even know it and it's just kind of all bubble bubbled up mm. but, yeah, and, yeah like locking all those it's like all these demons that just want to come out mm -hmm. but you just don't know what to do with that energy or how to actually bring it out so instead yeah. of diverting it to something healthy like let's say an outlet artistic outlet or expression mm -hmm. we kind of just put it down especially in Australian culture, we're very just, as a man especially, I'm sure this is true for many cultures in the world, but I feel like especially in Australian culture is that very kind of, it's tired the fuck up, don't cry, don't bitch, don't complain, don't share your feelings, that kind of thing. So mm. there's, and then as soon as you do express yourself or you try out something new, we have that kind of tall poppy syndrome where your mates kind of just cut you down. And I think this, leads into a lot of repression just repressing all that stuff and i think i didn't know what to do with that energy that primal raw kind of berserker energy so sometimes the light would just flick and then you just kind of go hulk mode and you just lose all control and it's not good it doesn't feel good to look back on these memories these dark memories and knowing that like you really hurt some people sometimes mm. even innocent people like there's one thing being a victim of abuse, but there's another thing being the perpetrator. It kind of fucks with you on another level, you know? Because it's like, you did that. Mm. And it's, yeah, it's pretty, pretty messed up. And I think when I was a kid, I didn't know what to, again, what to do with that energy. So I just drank myself, stupid, smoked, wagged, just did delin delinquent stuff, graphing on, walls breaking into places smashing windows just like little kind of teenage boy shit mm. <laughs> i just really get toothpaste there do i yeah <laughs> yeah 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 then no, no, you're gonna scab your lip but yeah i'm not gonna uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> hates when i do that because i was thinking how i was like nothing compared to that i was just kind of like a very good girl that wanted to be bad but never really did anything too bad like don't get me wrong I still did my stuff but my issue was like more communication and I think that that's where I got my my thyroid issues from is because mm. I didn't know how to communicate so and we'll, I reckon we'll dedicate a podcast to talk oh, yeah. more about we'll, that we'll, we will but yeah. we'll kind of foreshadow and uh, I want to do a video bla on that, Blaze so. through that. Yeah. That's kind of important to your ayahuasca intention yeah. as well. And so anyways, we can go forever about uh, what a piece of crap I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I had some but attributes you're good, too. But you're a different person now. That's what I mean. Like you yeah, learn yeah, yeah. from it and it's not, it, it's it's not hard, like it's hard you're to even still doing these things or no, that you it, don't feel guilty It's about actually them. really, sometimes it's even hard to relate to who I was. Like I was like, really? I used to be like that. Like, wow. Mm. I'm to the point now where it even bothers me when people swear too much. Like, that's like... Pfft. I never would have thought in a million years that that would be me. But now I'm just very careful. But I, it, it makes sense as well, just going to the extreme ends of polarity. Yeah. You know, and just like really testing out the darkness. Yeah. You know, testing the devil, that's so to speak. That's why it's learning balance. Yeah, definitely.
And so anyways, fast forward, I don't know, almost 10 years. I guess, give or yeah, take. it would be. And this is like maybe a couple years into my psychedelic spiritual awakening. I've already mm. started my channel at this point for a couple years. Uh, my very first video about my first ayahuasca experience was kind of saved me from depression and, and hardcore drug addiction and a, a lot of problems. Not saying it cured everything, but it was definitely it a transformative game changer. It's like a, a, on the train track, so a train's going either one of two ways. And ayahuasca was the switch that mm. made you go the one way rather than 100 percent longer way. 100 percent. So even my uh, my closest friends refer to me as, I don't know if they still do, but at least at one stage they refer to me as pre-ayahuasca Tom and post-ayahuasca mm. Tom. Like this is how profound of a shift Even my friends. This was. My oh, really? friends were like, yeah, they're like, he's so different. Like, I smile now. Yeah. Like it's such a, uh, like a normal, or it's almost like a defining characteristic. I'm always like laughing, smiling, whereas before, mm. not really. I would only see the smile, and now everyone sees a smile. It's like you've opened the door up for more people to see. Yeah. Because, yeah, I would always see you smile. And... So, yeah. So, we, okay, so this we was 2017, January. Mm, yes. And we went to Dreamglade, mm -hmm. Peru. Iquitos. Iquitos. How do, what do you think about Iquitos, first going there? It's beautiful. You're on the plane. You're seeing the Amazon rainforest. Mm, from it's Bird's beautiful. Eye view. It's not where you... I don't like. I don't even know how I would would have really imagined it, but it's it's a de it's it's oh, it's a desert. <laughs> it's a desert. It's like opposite from the desert. <laughs> it's just grass, water. It was no. Nah, it was beautiful. I was really really grateful for that opportunity. Done. gonna do that or you were gonna like splash us or something i was like did you see me coming no <laughs> but i had i had a Tell sense me, as soon as you got yeah. i was like what the hell <laughs> oh of course <laughs> uh, <laughs> like I'm, I'm not gonna lie i wanted it to fix stuff mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's not it's not a fix it kind of thing no. it's a it's just an opener a door opener for so many things for you to be able mm. to fix yourself and I just went through this journey and I just remember I cried a lot. I held myself and I was like, I've got you, I've got you. It's just like, I love you. And no, it was, it, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. I had a great, great first ceremony. What about you? People got upset last time because I killed an ant. What about mosquitoes? Is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Or as a mosquito, that's that's the line where you're allowed to kill. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, my my first experience was like really intense. Where it was like the going inside this fractal labyrinth kind of avatar, fluorescent colors, snake moving pillars, mm. infinitely complex geometric structures, and getting lost in this labyrinth, but being overwhelmed with these emotions. And I remember the facilitator, I think it was Stacy, kind of just helped me breathe through it. And then whew, I was able to traverse the terrain a lot more gracefully. Because it was like, at start, it was like kind of being lost in this crazy swamp and you're getting stuck and like mosquitoes are hitting you everywhere. And it's like, oh man, this is too much. I don't know where I am. And then Stacy was like, whew, just look around. Okay, I got this. And that was pretty much it. Mm. I don't remember like the exact insights or anything like that. I just remember it being like really visually what, fantastic. But it was too, uh, that's what I don't like about it when it's too visual because then it's like, it's too distracting in and of itself. I'm yeah. just basically focusing on surviving the vision versus yeah. getting like, but then again, that, that's, see, this is where my mentality has changed since first doing ayahuasca is I was always like, I want to get wisdom. I want to gain insight. I want to get, 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 get. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, 
I'm genuinely can just let it go, even if I don't get anything. It's funny that you say that because I remember having a vision or something of me like climbing up a ladder and there's like a trap door on top of me and I'm trying to break through the door and I remember crying and thinking like, I'm ready, I'm ready, just let me through, let me through, like just, I'm ready. And I just, as much as I pushed, as much as I shoved, and as much as I tried, it just wouldn't let me in. And I'm crying. I'm like, fine, I'll wait some more. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> haven't served your time yet. <laughs> I agree as well with the visions and stuff. It got to a point where everything's so blurred together. Like, I can't fully remember which one, which stuff was like from the first night. The, Second night, I know. Mm. The third night, but um, I do remember going through stuff like seeing multiple heads. Mm. This would have been the first night, so it was my face, and I can't remember what that thing is called where it's one face, two face, three face, like multiple faces. Um, and they were all my faces, but that's what I mean. Like there were parts of me that I had forgotten, and the trip was showing me to like love myself more, remember who I am and stuff like that, which was really very, very beautiful. Oh. <laughs> nah, I remember beautiful. shedding my skin as well, like a snake. Oh yeah, I remember you telling me that. How was that? Was it super satisfying? It was because like I remember feeling it just kind of come off and peel off me and just like sliding it off. And I even did like a little kick in my leg to kind of like wow like I was taking pants off or something yeah and then night two night two okay this is really intense so I'm assuming that most of you have probably seen my first ayahuasca documentary into the dark abyss and this is like experientially the most intense traumatic dark messed up experience that I've ever had in my life and this is to the point where even uh, Stacy, the, the owner of Dreamglade, said that I was like top two most intense. <laughs> fly! <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, yeah, he said it was like I'm in the top two or top three of the most crazy, like crazy experience, like full, full blown psychosis, like trying to kill myself sort of thing. So I had a bit of a an extra dose, just a little bit, because like. The first night I had half a cup, and then Stacey's like, all right, do you want same, less, more? I'm like, yeah, I'll get a little bit more. And then Stacey knew actually, he's like, oh, I don't know. And he only put like a little bit, but I think yeah, it was- Yeah, like my... a very minor amount. But I don't think it was the physical dose per se. I think it was my attitude of asking more. Yeah. You know okay, what I mean? Okay, yeah, actually, that makes the... sense. Because intention is everything. Mm -hmm. It's not everything, but it's very, very important. So your intention was like, Give it to me. I'm gonna go. I wanna go harder. Yeah, exactly. And I wanna go deep. It was crazy because within five minutes, I was already feeling the effects like full force. Usually, it takes half an hour for for you to I like drank, digest it. And... I drank before you. I was one of the first people to drink, and you were the last. And I, it still hadn't hit me, but yours just just getting into that <laughs> oh full no, blow. Oh no! Oh no! I broke my head. Yeah. No, I don't think you said me. I thought... But you said I broke my head. I broke my head, I broke my head. Yeah, because I just... Oh, it's so hard to explain, man, because just the, the... Just visually and auditorily and just the emotional space, but it was so overwhelming, like just like kind of my ego getting shredded apart and going to these really icky, dark dimensions and like really feeling that kind of collective suffering of humanity and just kind of being in that eternal loop and then with the the Icarus going and I would feel like I was melting sort of like this fractal toxic mud and just my brain was melting and to the point where I couldn't I didn't know the concept of just simple words like friend Tom time what is time what is friend what is life what do you know and then it's like oh fuck and that's when my mentality shifted i'm like oh no i fucked up like this is the one this is truly the one that's gonna that's gonna kill me this is like ayahuasca like i tricked you motherfucker you're fucked now and there's nothing you can do and then it just went way darker and then it kind of just perpetuated itself 
And I was like, shit, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to, fuck, I'm going to have to kill myself. Because there's no way, I'm like, I'm not going to just stick in this dimension. And I think that's when I, did I just yell out straight away? Like, you help. Were, throughout all of this, you didn't stop. You were screaming, yelling for most of it. Fuck. It was the scariest thing just to kind of hear him constantly like, oh, no, no, I broke my head. I broke my head. And then... I saw Stacy and I think Drew come over and they were trying to help you like calm down and you were just like, I broke my head, I broke my head, no, 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 I broke my head. And then you started screaming. Because they, yeah, they, they were helping me throw, so they were both next to me on the bed and I'm just like throwing up my head in the bucket. And I, I think they saw That's that it was worse. so intense for you that they were try, the shaman was trying to suck it out, mm. um, but it just got worse. It just like hit you so much harder. And then I went outside. They took you outside. And I was like were... stumbling and I remember throwing up over the the balcony. You were screaming. Just, like just like the most demonic, hardcore, primal purge I've ever had in my life. Just, and I remember Stacy like, fuck man, you got some shit in you. So physically I felt such a huge discomfort where my body was felt like it was almost disintegrating from this dimension. My stomach was churning and I was in so much pain. I just remember purging and purging, but it wasn't just a normal throwing up. It was like this, throwing up this dark, toxic sludge almost, you know? There are times where I purge and I just know that it's like my family shit or something like that, but this one felt like I've been carrying this since, since childhood. You know, and just to go back on the start we can kind of analyze it after we tell the story but something that we realized yesterday is like that i always had that berserker switch where i would cool. like just go full psycho mode that's what i know but wait because there's well yeah no yeah. We'll, we'll, okay we'll talk about it we'll analyze it Cause... afterwards okay so i'm throwing up over the balcony yeah i'm freaking out like my reality like me just opening my eyes it was also, like i couldn't with, tell the difference between with closed couples eyes and open going eyes. with couples going to the retreat um you're not allowed to interfere mm. and we were also doing a dieta where we weren't even allowed to touch mm -hmm. uh, so my main thing was trying to focus on my trip and what was happening for me because nothing had started yet nothing had started and I couldn't help but kind of have my mind wander over to him hearing him scream in the background so I'm sitting there chilling waiting while he's just screaming and continue and it's just getting more intense more intense I'm like sick as a dog like just stumbling through the psychosis is just getting kind of worse I'm sh shrieking like get me a fucking gun and I remember getting mad at the facilitator of like, dude, can't you see that I'm fucking suffering right now? Like, don't you have any empathy? Can, can you just please give me a gun? I just wanted to like, or, or at least a, a benzo or some drug just to kind of shut this off. I can't deal with this. Seriously, I cannot do this. Every second was like eternity of the most intense suffering. Like, the only thing I can really think of of what, if there was like a hell, this would, this would be it. And my biggest fear have, has always been like to, to lose my mind. And... Then I started going through this whole thing, this whole... You were screaming, screaming, put a gun, get to, me my a gun, head, put a gun to my, to my head. head. And he's like, dude, shh. I'm like obviously disturbing the whole maloka, but again, at that point, it's like, dude, just please. And then was this the time where I basically yelled out your name just because I wanted to you say were, goodbye? No, you were screaming out my name for a... Yeah, you started screaming out my name and you were putting... You were saying, put a gun to my head. Yes, Sanya. Yes, and yeah, and I'm like sobbing because I'm like, I can't, I can't. Um, and then you really screamed, so I was like, that's it. No, I gotta, I gotta get up. I have you to. You can't try. ignore this. No. <laughs> so I walked over. Um, again, I'm still. Nothing's happened. Nothing's hit in for me. Uh, I walk over and I saw Drew, and I was like, oh. Do you need do you need help? Do you want me to come? And he's like, yeah, 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 no, come, come, come help. And I just see Tom. You would think that he'd be like frailed, crazy, but he was like hulked out. He was just ready in fight mode, in beast mode. And I remember your eyes being like black and just empty. 
Oh, that's really? what was so terrifying. Oh, no, I didn't know that. Is that I saw you. It's like supernatural but it was, demonic shit. It was shit. like you weren't there and it was so terrifying. And oh. you just kept grabbing me and you were just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to leave you, I have to leave you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm done. Like saying that he had to die, he had to kill himself. He was like, kill me now, well, kill me it's now. It's devastating because I literally thought I was going to kill myself and I, this was like my goodbye to you. So mm. Just like sobbing, like really that deep soul sobbing, but just and from like despair and hopelessness, you know. And we were trying to get him into the shower to like put him in cold water to try and help him sober up and be quick because they gave you lemon with salt or something. Early? No, yeah, no, they gave it to me. Oh, really? You. Yeah, ah. uh, as soon as you started screaming like that. Okay. And I came out to help you. That's when they gave you everything to try and bring you back down. We we're trying to put you in the shower. You kept screaming, pushing out of the shower. You broke the shower curtain. I remember hitting my head on the tile of the shower wall. Just bang, because I wanted, again. I, I don't think I was there for that one. Because they didn't give me a gun. So I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to do this stuff the old fashioned way, sort of thing. And then and I'm like, to Stacey like don't make me fight you this was a terrifying experience for me as well because like I know that that's his deepest fear that he would lose his mind but I guess it was kind of a check for my ego as well to be like I always thought that I could ground him and that no matter what I could pull him out of whatever he's going into but this made me realize that nah, I have no control over this I can only offer comfort and support if he needs it and if he wants it because that night I was trying to be there for him I was trying to calm him down trying to get him back but he was just gone it was so hard because I knew that that was his greatest fear and that I just felt so bad because I I couldn't help him get out of it I couldn't help him I couldn't help him snap out and snap out of it. I couldn't bring him back and it was just I started imagining coming back home without him and having to tell people that I started thinking about his mom and my parents and it was really just I had all the good moments in my head. And it just it just just broke my heart hearing him scream in the background, knowing that I couldn't help him thinking that he wasn't coming back. It was a really rough night. I just kept trying to imagine him in the morning smiling and laughing like, oh, what a trip, man. It's, I was really, really mad at him as well for putting me through that. All I could envision him, it was just like, in the morning, I'm going to give him the biggest slap in the face. But obviously, he got a big enough beating, so I didn't really need to. Thankfully, I hope he's learned his lesson. Mm. The rocket had taken off, it was drifting in space, and there was nothing I could do to bring it back down. I had to just wait it out. Well, like, but Stacy as well said like I was gone, but I was also like there was a little bit of my soul. It was like you was, were ten percent there. there. Yeah, yeah. I remember thinking. I was like, I was a little bit like, I've lost control of the of the ship, but at the same time, I'm still kind of like, no, hand, yeah. please. It's like my ego was just like really holding on. And we were trying to stop you. You kept walking around. You wouldn't stop moving, and I. It's kind of like when you're trying to catch a chicken. You know, like everyone has yeah. to go in one corner to just kind of, and the chicken's like, bah, 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 bah. it's kind of how you were like, no, don't, no, no, no. And then at this point, I was like, don't make me fight you. And then I like ran towards the cars. <laughs> like, I'm going to drive to the hospital or some shit. And then they, they're like, we're going to have to pin him down. <laughs> and then I think Stacy like, tackled me to the ground and my face is like in the mud i've got drew on one hand one arm stacy like on one arm lying on my back i've got someone uh who's a big boy as well the the bold guy I've got him yeah there. he was on my leg so i had three people like three grown-ass men and i was like yeah. they're not little people as well and then my my face is just getting dug into the mud and i remember getting overwhelmed in this 
I don't know how to explain except for just like really dark evil demons or something like just all these figures kind of going around me like just and my reality is kind of just closing in closing in closing in to the point where it was so painful that again like killing yourself would be the uh, what's the word like the the good on? thing to do oh, yeah, <laughs> you know what okay. I mean it's like if you had any empathy to see someone like that you would put them out of their misery mm. sort of thing like but yeah I remember by this point I had started purging because uh, it, it hit me and it really hit me because I remember looking at you trying to calm you down and then your face started to distort and I was like okay this is not a good time but it's hitting me I started purging that's when they ha they were holding you down and I came over to try and help but because it hit me and the way you were yelling it's like I could see the energy bubble just grow and like actually yell at me uh, to the point where I had to say to them, I'm like, I'm really sorry, but I can't be here anymore. You guys are just going to have to wait it out. That was screeching. You, that, no, no. Get I went in. Off. No, I'm not, I'm not going to do it here. I went inside. The cops. <laughs> I went inside, devastated that I couldn't help you anymore. I laid down crying, and then you started really screaming, like, Rah! like, you could hear that it was coming from somewhere deep down inside, just Ah, like letting it out and I remember thinking that like a, just uh, let him let it out I'm like it's it's obviously something that he's had deep within him locked up that just where else are you going to be able to let that out than in the middle whoa. of the Amazon in the jungle and just really almost whoa. like an exorcist in a, in a way well that's why when we were saying about you being berserker in high school maybe you didn't let it all out fully in a health like obviously no. not in a healthy way and this and was the all more, that stored and the more i let that out during high school and you know not just fighting random people but like sometimes like loved ones bubbling. Bubbling. but every time you exercise that it just integrates deeper into your to your core because you're validating its existence and its power yeah uh, and not to go like too supernatural but like seriously this was this was not just a, a normal like oh you're just facing your shadow man no nah, <coughs> no this was something thought, really extraordinary like if you I were to see if you were to see it like this is the kind of experience that would traumatize you from ayahuasca just from seeing someone react that way you know what i mean oh yeah there was a guy there as well that it was, was his, his first, first night. night yeah poor sean oh god <laughs> no i remember thinking that that was it i was crying in the bed thinking that's it he's lost his mind i'm gonna have to take him home in a straight jacket i'm gonna have to put him into some because even because even while I was in it I'm like oh I'm gonna have to kill myself because I thought even if I get out of this I'm gonna be crazy forever mm. I don't want like my Yesenia to take care of me in this state and put that burden on my family it's like nah fuck that I remember thinking what am I gonna, gonna tell gonna your myself. mom how am I gonna tell her she's gonna be devastated and I was trying to think of ways that we could get him to snap out of it quicker I was like maybe if we tie him up and throw him into the lake and then just kind of pull him out. And then I was like, no, like, what's the guarantee? Like, he'll probably drown. I'm like, there's just got to be a way that we can get him in a cold spot. I'm like, oh, but maybe if they just knock him out. And, and, I was like, mm. and as well, to go back to the berserker thing, I also had like suicidal issues or thoughts, at least, when I was a kid. So there was a lot of like really deep, repressed, dark shit that yeah. like the core. And now, and it makes more sense now because I've always been, we've been analyzing this experience for a while. It's like, oh, it could be this, could be this. But just yesterday, that, again, that, that no, term, little... berserker switch, that mm -hmm. was like the final piece of the puzzle. It was like, yes, that's exactly it. It was a berserker that I had within me. Because it's never even, it's never come out since. Never had that crazy experiences since that. Never no. even had like, nothing to do with suicidal depression or like severe depression or so but that being said okay we'll finish off the story because i was like pinned down oh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck off, give me a gun and then um i think stacy was like gonna put his arm around me or something and i i, I bit his hand and it's like oh shit but then he told me the next day that it was like like a dog biting their owner's hand of like I'm warning you, like I, I'm not gonna bite 100%, but I'm just showing you that if you come near me, 
I'm going to go for it. It's that kind of thing. So again, that's the 10% or whatever percentage of me was still there, you know, so it wasn't just complete me just trying to draw blood immediately. He did have a mark on him though. <laughs> My apologies, Stacey. Uh, but then the shaman came and they were sucking, energetically sucking the ayahuasca out of me. I'm pinned down. Ah, give me the lemon with the soul. Ah, da, 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 and then eventually it just whoosh, dissipated. And I was like completely back to normal. I was like, just imagine me like this, like with blood all over my head, mud everywhere, and just, oh shit. Your face what did all I messed do? up. I'll, I'll put some pictures mm. to show you what I looked like. And yeah, I was kind of, I kind of felt silly, like even just to go there. And I was like, oh man, what the, f what was, what was that? It's never happened before. To the point where the facilitators thought that I must have taken some drugs they or something. They asked me, they're like, yeah, and like, has he taken anything? Has he been on this, like, has this ever happened before? And I'm like, no, nah, never. Like, the closest was on a really high dose of mushrooms, but it wasn't. It wasn't that bad. No, nah, it was no like, in way, like, it was like little glimpses of that. And again, maybe it's that repressed stuff that sort maybe. of Maybe, like, bubbled up again. So I think that's when they came in to That would have been the me. closest, but it wasn't, because this was like, because I've had scary experiences before where I like, kind of hit you in ways, but you still have enough of your will where you're like, all right, you're, you know, you took mushrooms. Yeah, no, you've never been to that extent where you're absolutely... Where your very like, soul got crazy. sucked into you're hell and you're, yeah. like, and you're just getting shredded apart in the most horrific way that that you could ever imagine, you know, and I ended up, like I, I woke up and I was kind of like as fine as you can be for that experience. You know, the facilitators thought that, oh, for sure this guy's gonna pack his bags and leave the next day. And, and I, I, I feel like any, any sane I person would have. <laughs> I was like, well, when you were screaming and everything, I was like, that's it, I'm gonna have to pack him up, we're gonna have to leave, we're gonna have to go home. I'm like, I'm not gonna let him do this again. This is, this is it, we're done. That's it. Done. Psychedelics, not for me. Yeah. And I continued. <laughs> I stayed. We skipped the next ceremony. Mm -hmm. And we kind of, I talked to, so I had a deep chat with Stacy and Drew about just what happened and kind of going through like potential childhood trauma or something like that. And it, it's kind of, it was hard to pin down. Like I said, just yesterday, it, we just put that last piece of the puzzle together, which is really why I wanted to make this video to kind of complete that arc and just leave this story once and for all, especially with uh, Yesenia's take on it, which is really important. Um, but it's scary, man. That shit was really, really, really scary, and it left me traumatized, man. I remember even after that uh, that retreat, I had like, I remember I had sleep paralysis like three times mm. in the in Peru. Yeah. And that's and I'm like, man, I never have sleep paralysis. I've had it like once or twice in my entire life, and now I got it three times in one week. Something's not not right here. I remember sitting in Mexico one day and not really thinking about the experience, like thinking about it in, in terms of like, whoa, whoa, that was crazy and kind of telling the story. But I remember sitting in Mexico and it kind of really sunk in like, dude, that was some serious stuff. Like that's like some traumatic shit that you, you're not just gonna, you know, scruff off. This is like some really, really, really serious stuff. And you really I, kicked up some dirt. Yeah, and I, that, that was kind of when shortly after I collaborated with Psych Substance and it was a terrible time to do that, you know? And yeah, well, I guess we can kind of go into that in another podcast, the Iboga existential crisis sort of thing. Because mm. that was like the real messed up part. That was the <laughs> definitely the darkest period of my life. That was like you kicking up dirt and instead of waiting for it to settle and then dusting, you came and spread water on it. <laughs> So you made mud. And so, <laughs> enough about me. How was your experience? 